part, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start out on this thing with uh, this kingdom series. I started it Wednesday, but I have to do a little bit of recap. So we're going we're gonna to start with Acts chapter 1, please. Starting at verse 1. Because we got to become more kingdom minded. Yeah. And I'm going to show you why. It's this, because of the season and time that we're in. Yeah. Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 through 3. Um, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that, of all that Jesus both, um, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So he's about to say and tell you what he began to do and teach. Until the day which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Uh -huh. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion um, by many infallible proofs. Speaking, being, uh, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining of, uh, to the kingdom of God. Here we see Jesus after his passion, after he got up. So, so after, after, uh, that after Sunday, I use for example, that we celebrate Easter, that Monday, if you will, was after his passion. Yeah. And after his passion, uh, the Bible says for 40 days, he was going, he was got out there proving himself alive, showing himself to his apostles. Um, and not only that, but he was also teaching them. And what he was teaching them, the Bible says, he was teaching them about things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Yeah. Now remember, right, right, before, uh, right before this, Jesus, or right after Jesus was telling them to go in the upper room. He hung around for 40 days, but in 50 days, see, Pentecost means 50. Yeah. So from the time of the resurrection, from the time of that time, 50 days afterwards, they had, uh, they had Pentecost. And so he was around for 40 of them days, and after he went up, they was in the upper room for an extra 10 days, for 10 days, really. And after that, on that 10th day, that's when the Holy Spirit came. So Jesus was around getting them ready for what was about to happen. Jesus was, Jesus was around... Uh, not only showing them and doing miracles, but he was also around telling them and letting them know about the move of God that was going to happen that they'd never seen before. They were about to step into a new move of God like never before. Now remember, he had to teach them and get them prepared for, for things pertaining to the kingdom because before then they didn't understand the kingdom. Before then, they had Old Testament law. And all they understood was the law, judgment, you know, all that's all they understood. Jesus came around and started changing up everything. And they started listening to Jesus, but you know, they were sick back, they didn't get it. But then all of a sudden, now he's telling them that this time, that this kingdom of God thing is about to manifest for them. And he's going to talk to them about the kingdom. But they were still under, under, uh, under the assumption that he was going to start a natural kingdom. And Jesus was like, no, 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 my kingdom is not in this world. My kingdom, the kingdom is not here and there. But it's, it's, it's an invisible kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. And so he was getting them ready for what he was about to do. And that's why, that's why I said it's so important to talk about this in this season up until the day of Pentecost, Pentecost uh, Sunday, because we want to have a series on the kingdom because Jesus thought it was so urgent that after he got up, he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Because of a new move that was about to happen. Because of something that was about to shift on the earth and change everybody's lives forever. Yeah. Dare I say to you, as I stand here, I'm going to talk to you as much as I can until Pentecost Sunday about things of the kingdom on Sundays, on Wednesdays, and as much as I can. And because I believe that after Pentecost Sunday, that just like with them, that in the harvest, that you, that we are on the brink, on the verge of a move of God that we have never experienced before. And it's time for us to get ready for something we've never seen before. It's time for us to get ready for something that y'all, y'all, God wants to, he got to get us ready. 
God has to get us ready. He has to get us ready for the new building. He has to get us ready for uh, for, for doing some work. See, because now uh, many of you got really lazy uh, with, here with Indy Harvest. See, because we just come on Sundays and we do everything else virtual. We don't really do nothing else corporately because, you know, all the shifting that happened because of COVID and how we where we are. And, you know, a lot of things that happen. So it's very easy to get so busy in everything else and kind of get lazy with the kingdom stuff sometimes and, and because it's just, just it's just how it is. But you're going to have to get your mind prepared because God will need your body. Ah, Not just your screen. Yeah. 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 All right. He, he, he been, God been, God been, you having the screen. Uh oh, okay, I put it to the side on Wednesday. Okay, then, and, do, but, and then you know, put it to the side, turn it on, you can do whatever. And it's on and everything. But now God is ready for, 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 for your body to take those cards and we walk out on the streets and talk to some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, God is ready to, for you to use your body and go out there and we go places and pray for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, God is ready for us to go and do some stuff and get some get some dinners and get some food and go feed some people there. God is, God is ready for you to get some of your old clothes and we, we find a place and we go and we get people some clothes and get, it's time, it's time. It's time. God's getting you ready. We were in preparation time. Yeah. yeah. You were in preparation for one of the biggest moves of God you're about to ever see. I I'm, 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 I'm shouting that thing from the house. So Jesus, for 40 days, was getting them ready. Because think about it, Holy Spirit never came in like that before. They never spoke in tongues. This was something new about to happen. And whenever you want something new, you got to get prepared for it. Right. Because naturally, your body don't like, and your, and your, and your natural man don't like new. Right. It's get conditioned with the old. Mm -hmm. It don't like change a lot of times. Right. No. No, they don't like change a lot of times. They don't like it. Sometimes we get stuck in our routines, and God's like, no, no, no. You need, it's time for some change, and, and, and we got to get ready. But true change don't happen until, you, until it happens up here. Yeah. In order to get change out here, you got to get change here. Yeah. I'm gonna say that one more time. In order to get change out here, you gotta get change in here. If you don't change in here, you're not gonna change out there. I, I you hear people saying, "I want to change my life," and if you want to change your life, you gotta change your thinking. If you change your thinking, you'll change your life. If you don't change your thinking, you won't change your life. Because if you say, "I want to change," but you still think like you thought yesterday, you won't do what you did yesterday. But if I begin to put new information in the way I think and I process differently, now I can now I think different than what I used to think. So now I can do different from what I used to do. And because I changed the way I think, I gotta change it in here. If I don't change the way I think, I'll never change my life. So changing your life is every has everything to do with changing your thinking. Glory to God. So you look at Jesus and say, He's about to change your life forever. And so Jesus is saying it's time for you to change your thinking. So he prepares him. He's been preparing him, preparing him ever since he walked on the scene. In Matthew, I mean in Mark, in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Now after that they put John in prison, Jesus came unto Galilee preaching the gospel of the good news of the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. But listen to what he said about it first. Saying, it is time, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom is at hand. In other words, the kingdom is here. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent means to change. Repent means to change your mind towards God, change your mind about God. See, you got to change your mind that God doesn't give you sickness. You got to change your mind that God didn't put sickness on you so you can be, so He can heal you, so you can have a ministry. Amen. God didn't, God didn't, God didn't, God does not cause babies and and children to starve all over the world. That's right. See, people that people, I know people. I had to talk to people, and I've been in a lot of places where I've been people that's anti-God, and, and they got so many things to say about God. If God is so good, then why all these people dying? If God is so good, why all this stuff happened? How many of y'all been around with people that I mean, if God is so good, why bad things happen to me? If God is so good, half of the time, half of the stuff that happened in our life has nothing to do with God or the devil. It's our decisions. Right. You make a bad decision to blame it on God. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden, people, people look at that, but they forget God made man and gave us free will. Right, right. And God made, gave man dominion on this earth. Right. And what happens is this starvation is man's inhumanity to man. Right. It's not God's numbness or, or ignorance or just ignoring us. Right. 
Starvation. No, 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 no. I cannot say man, it don't hit nobody. But let me say it like this. Starvation is your fault. Right. Not God's fault. Yeah. It's our fault as people for letting people go hungry. Yeah. When you threw out more food than some nations eat in a year. Yeah. And we blaming God as people. It's the truth. So the thing about it is, is you got to change the way you think about God. You got to change about how you think about your life. You will never change your life if you still think you're nobody. You will never change the way you, uh, the way you, the way you, the way you live and the way you treat yourself. Watch this. This will be good. This is good. You will never, you will never change the way you treat yourself if you don't change the way you perceive yourself. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You will never think you deserve it. If you never change the way you see yourself and see how, because you need to see yourself the way God sees you. You've been seeing yourself through that perverted, distorted way. you got to see yourself the way God sees you. Go already, God. Right. I'm talking good already. Yes, you yeah. are. So now, when all of a sudden, so now, so, 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 if I want to, watch this, whatever I want to do, let me just say this, and let me hurry up and go, because i got to hurry up and talk about some stuff. I don't have much time at all. Listen to this. Here you go. I'm going to show you something. I'm, I use this for, I use my wife as an example. I've been married 27 years. I know how to schmooze her over. So, so let me, let me do this All right, here we go. If you're married, I can teach you some things. My wife, back in the day, she said and made a resolution, made a thought, made a plan, made a, made a declaration. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to start exercising. She began to say, you know what? Instead of me just saying, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to begin to act, begin, begin more to be, begin to be more active. I'm not to get back. We was on Vineshire. Y'all remember Vineshire? Was it Vineshire over there? In those apartments? When Freedom lived in the basement? Was that Vineshire? Uh -huh. Now I remember, I remember that during that time, you used to get the shape. She, she, she started get ordering shape magazine. And I see all these little half new white women. <laughs> hey man, yeah, I do that. You go, oh. Yeah, yeah. And you be like, oh. And then that was back in the day. How many of y'all remember Denise Austin? <laughs> Denise Austin, come on now. Squeeze those guns or nobody else will. <laughs> I mean, Denise Austin came on every day. Yeah. Every day she's like, come on now. Come on. Come on now. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, come on, you can. You can. Yeah. And every day I would, I would be up there here, I'd be hearing Denise Austin. Even if my wife didn't do the workout, she would look at Denise Austin. Right. <laughs> Why? Because what was she doing? She's looking at the activity she plans on doing, even though she's not doing it. That's why I'd stop, 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 stop. Don't never, never stop dream building. Never stop dream building because in order to get where you have to go, you gotta keep seeing where you want to go. So she kept seeing exercise, exercise. So that, that was registered getting in her. But yet, even though she was working out, she would look at the shape magazine, and there was there was white girls on there. there was, but it was just, but sometimes you walk in and you see this. It was funny. She would read it. She started learning how to cook. She started learning what to eat, what not to eat. Learning what to cook, not to cook. She don't have to. Learning how, you know, you know what? She started learning about iTunes. That's when you started learning about iTunes. Learning all these type of things. But, but yet, she, didn't, she wasn't all into it yet. She was just looking at it. Reading. She was reading Shape Magazine. Looking at the different stuff. Because, you know, you see images enough. It, it'll help you out. It, 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 it gets in your head. And looking at Denise Austin sometimes, and then and then you know and work doing whatever, and you know she's just doing just 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 getting herself ready because she she made a plan that she's gonna lose her weight, yeah. and she's gonna get in shape. Now hold on, watch this. It did. I'll never forget. I can't tell you when it happened, but I'll never forget. One day, out of nowhere, it seemed like one day I wake up or I go downstairs or something. I wake up and all of a sudden my wife she she with Denise Austin working out now. She went from just looking at Denise Austin to working out with Denise. Denise Austin was a bomb, y'all. I'm telling you, she was, she was, I, I, I love myself with Denise Austin. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. She was, I love her. She was, she was, she was, she was, boy, she was just on, on, on TV every day. Yeah. She, was, she was the, she was, I mean, no, she was something. Y'all remember Richard Simmons? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah. hey, wait, well, let me hurt, because we got right now. Yeah. 
Richard Simmons also. Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons. But 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 uh but then all of a sudden she started doing that. Then she started changing how she eats. She started buying like little protein bars and she started making those changes and just little by little, little by little, all of a sudden the information that she's been putting in here and changing how she thinks, all of a sudden now she's beginning acting it out. See, it didn't start overnight, but what she did was she started, she started putting that information in. She started thinking about like that. She started thinking that way. And she started, she started, listen to this. She started thinking, uh, thinking healthy. Yeah. And all of a sudden it started manifesting. Yeah. See, you got, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't keep hanging around poor and reading poor and talking poor and, and all of that and expect to be rich. You gotta read read stuff about being rich. You gotta go and dream big. And see, you gotta go and, and, and build yourself and get yourself up and start thinking that way. Because if I think that way, I'm gonna end up being that way. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. So if I wanna be that way, I gotta change my thinking. I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper, your mind, your emotions, your will, your thoughts. You gotta change the way you think. And the way we do that, we can't do that with just looking at our, our social media all the time. We can't just do that, just, just hanging out, sleeping all the time, or playing. We gotta get information. We gotta listen to stuff that's gonna build us up. How much thing, how many things do you listen to to learn about wealth? Learn about money, learn how to invest. But yet we say we want to be a passive millionaire. How? You don't even know how to make passive income. Because you haven't trained or learned how to do it. Hallelujah. You can't say I want to be a nail tech and never learn. You're going to give somebody finger, somebody, somebody's fingers infection. You got to learn it. You got to get what I'm saying. So anyway, I, I, I spent too much time on that. What time is it? Oh, geez, I got 10 minutes. Now listen. So Jesus began to tell them to think differently because, because now it's time for kingdom. Jesus did not come to start a religion. Jesus did not come to start a religion. He came to start a kingdom. A kingdom is the govern is a is a governing impact of the king over uh, over territory or domain and is and he is the uh, and his influence over the people. It's a it's a government that's led by a king. You know, a king, we don't understand kingdom because we vote our elected, we vote our officials in. Right. Kings aren't voted in. Right. They're born into being the king. Right. We don't we don't have no say so. And on Wednesday, I begin to try to build a structure for you so that we can have kingdom reality. So you can understand and understand the reality of the kingdom. I, I'm not hooping and hollering, and, but I, let me help you out a little bit. Because, because in order to really have true, um, uh, true access and operation in the kingdom, you've got to understand it's a real thing. Kingdom is just not something we say at church. Right. Uh -huh. It's not, you know, church for us is doc is about the kingdom. Oh yeah, I got your back, bro. It's about the kingdom. You know, I'm a kingdom person. Kingdom, kingdom. And you hear it as a cliche so much. Right. But yet it's not a cliche, it's not a religion, it's not a slogan, it's a real government. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The kingdom of God is the government of the the government of God on this earth that we may can't see uh, in, in, with our eyes, but yet we see the manifestation of it in the lives of people. Right. So the kingdom, now watch, watch this real quick. I'm going to throw it out here. All kingdoms in history has to have, let me get, build this up, has to have these virtual, virtually has to have these things, these certain components, these certain things to be a kingdom. In order to be a kingdom, you need a king. Right. Uh -huh. We have a king. God is our king. In order to, in order for, uh, in order to, for a kingdom, in order to have a king, be a kingdom, it must have territory. The earth is a territory. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In order to have a kingdom, you must have a constitution. We have a constitution, the word of God. The word of God is the constitution. You must have a citizenry. And we have a citizenry. What is that? The believers, you, the righteous. You must have law. 
The word says, the word says that uh, that 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 his um, he he exalts his word above his name, and 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 uh, his word, the the words of a king is law. When a word, when a king says something, it becomes law. When they say you can't worship this, it becomes law. When they say you can't do that, it becomes law. We have law. We have privilege. Every kingdom must have privilege or benefits. The Bible says he daily loans us with benefits. We have benefits as citizens. We're citizens with benefits. Every kingdom has a code of ethics. We have a code of ethics called the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. A code of ethics. Every, 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 every kingdom has an army. We have an army, a powerful one. Psalms 103 talks about it. The angels of God. Yes. Psalms 103, it says it, that bless ye the Lord, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his word. It says, Bless the Lord, ye his minister, O ministers of his that do his pleasure. We have an army. The angels are the army. I know we say I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, but technically the angels are the soldiers. They're the army. Every kingdom needs a commonwealth. And we have a commonwealth. In Ephesians 2 and 12, it says that we were aliens at one time, but now we're part of the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth means this, means that it guarantees all citizens equal, uh, equal access to financial security. And God says it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You remember this? You remember this in the Old Testament? They, 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 God said, I'm going to rain down manna. Some went out and picked out a lot, picked up a lot of manna, and some picked up a little. But God says, for those who picked up much, give to those who picked up a little so everybody can have equal, so it'll be no lack. In the book of Acts, they came, sold their possessions, gave it to the uh, apostles, and he distributed as everyone had need, so there will be no lack. That's called commonwealth. We're a kingdom. We're in a kingdom. We're in a kingdom. See, every kingdom has social culture. The culture of our kingdom we live in is something that most of us don't like to live by. Love. They know us by our love because I love you. Because I love folks. Oh, man, because you talk about me, but yeah, I still pray for you. Love, love, love is our culture. Love is our protocol. Love is our... It's love. It's love. So when you look at this, when you look at this real quick, when you see that, when you see these, when you see these parts in the kingdom of God, I, I said all that to say this. I want you to, because you can't have faith if you don't believe it's real. If you don't believe the kingdom is real, you can't have faith for the kingdom. I wish I was interested in information and stuff like I have. Y'all, heal y'all daydream. Come on, I'm, I'm get, 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 get with me, get with me, get with me. Glory to God, because after we dance and shout, you got to go out there and live. That's right. After we, hope, you know, hey, 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 hey. Woo. after we do all that, and and, and boy, after we do, after we do that, we got to go out there and live. That's right. And we got to live in the kingdom that we can't see. That's right. That's right. Okay. Because there's two kingdoms: the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is a real kingdom. It's a real government. That's why I told you that it has this structure. Now I can have faith in the structure of the invisible kingdom of God that I'm born into. Because in order to be a kingdom citizen, you must be saved, born again. Once I'm born again, I'm a legal citizen. And I have legal rights to everything the constitution of the of this of the of the kingdom tells me I can have. So when it comes down to healing, my body can be healed and free from pain because I have a right as a citizen. Boy, you lose your job. They kick you off the job. That's all right. Okay, I'm gonna get another one, but I'm gonna go home. And then guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna file for unemployment. Why? Because I'm a citizen and I have a right to it. Listen, when it comes down to the benefits of God, if the if the word promises it, this is our constitution, and we have a right to every promise in the book. We have a right to everything God says we can have. Oh, glory to God. But why I don't see it? That's the devil trying to fight you. Right. Stuff trying to resist you. And you got to grow up or beyond it. You got to grow up past being a whiner. You got to grow up past being a quitter. You got to grow up past being a complainer. You got to grow up past 
living by what you see all the time. Because we're in an invisible kingdom. How? Let me hurry up. So what happens is, if you don't get priority, if you don't prioritize the kingdom, it's so easy to get swept away with this worldly kingdom. Because this worldly kingdom going to tell you what to do. They're going to tell you how to think. Even though they won't let us let begin, they won't let us come in and open Bibles and tell people what the word says, but yet they can go and sit down and a teacher can have a little talk with some with 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 uh with a ten year old. Uh and what grade you in Ashton? See in what grade, fifth grade? <laughs> in fifth grade, you can sit down and talk to fifth grade and says, you know, sometimes you just gotta explore so you can see how you feel. No, 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 they don't need to explore. They need to explore nothing but the playground. But it's okay for you to tell them to explore because, you know, you're young and you don't know what you may like right now. A teacher literally said that. But if I come and say, Jesus is the way, you will kick me out and get in trouble. So now, so now the power dynamic now shifts. Now you can say all that you want to say about that, about pronouns, calling people pronouns and all these other things. But I can't say what, what the word says about the Bible, about people, about women, about I can't say that. Because I'm imposing, watch, my religion. But it's okay for you to impose your stuff. Uh -huh. Why is it okay for you to see if I can oppose, you shouldn't be able to oppose. Come on, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yes, yes. Right. If I can't come and suggest you should serve Jesus, you shouldn't come and suggest that they may be confused and need to explore sexuality. Right. 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 Yeah. Teaching math. Right. Reading, writing. Yeah. Leave the parenting to us. Right. Yes. Your kingdom. And see, part of the job of the kingdom is that our job as citizens of the kingdom is to, is to manifest kingdom culture in this territory. We got to manifest kingdom culture. Now let me hurry up. Let me hurry up because I didn't say nothing. I've, I didn't say nothing. Come on now. I didn't say nothing. Listen, every kingdom has a certain components. Real quick, let me show you this. All kingdoms are comprised of certain components components that are necessary for them to function effectively. All kingdoms, including the kingdom of God, have this. They all have a health program. Every kingdom has a health program. Guess what? We have the health program. By his stripes, we are healed. We have the gifts of healing. Everyone has an educational program. We have, we have the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. Every kingdom has a taxation system. Uh -huh. We have tithing. Because yeah. tithing, it funds the kingdom. Right. Every, every kingdom, every kingdom has a central communication service. I mean system. And we have the gifts of the spirit. Huh? A, um, a central, um, a, a central communication system. Central. Central. Okay. Everybody has a communication system. We got the gifts of the spirit. Every, every kingdom have diplomatic corps. Or diplomats. Every, every kingdom have diplomats. You know what a diplomat is, right? A diplomat is a person who works to keep the good, good relationships between the governments. And, and we, the Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. So we are the diplomats. Everyone has, every kingdom has a system of administration. And, uh, and, and we have the administration of the spirit uh, uh, through mankind uh, called the church. Amen. And every, and every kingdom has an economy. We have seed time harvest. Sowing and reaping, giving and receiving. We're a legal, real kingdom. You're part of a real, legal kingdom. The problem is we just don't see it. So therefore we get we get we get we get we get us we get distracted with the kingdom of this world. Right, right. I gotta I gotta run now. Come on, that's it. Watch this, y'all. Um Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says this. 
For unto us, listen to what it says. For unto us a child is born, unto us um, a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders. Jesus, is, Jesus came and brought a government, not a religion. He, did, he didn't come so we could just have church. He came so that we can live kingdom culture. Right. Now watch. I'm, 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 as my wife says, I laugh my wife. She always laughs until I'm landing the plane. Let me land this plane for you. I'm coming down. I'm, coming, I'm, in the, I'm approaching the runway. <laughs> so now what we need to do is we need to get a revelation of kingdom reality so that we can help, so that we can help uh, to begin to bring kingdom culture in this earth. And we need to get a revelation of it so we can understand kingdom priority. Because we need to start prioritizing the kingdom. We do everything else, but now we need to prioritize the kingdom. We need to prioritize and seek the kingdom. We need to be pleasing the king. Every citizen pleases the king. When you're in the king's favor, the king can give you whatever he wants to. I'm about to close. Hold on. Watch this. Let's read this. The Bible says in, in Matthew 6 and 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things shall be added unto you. We worry about everything. We worry about what we need to live, where we need to live, what we need to eat, what we need to drink, all the, the gas prices. But God said... If you get your priorities right, if you begin to get your priorities right, and don't just seek your job, don't just seek the worldly things, but begin to seek my kingdom. Begin to seek the kingdom. Let the kingdom be your priority. Once the kingdom is your priority, that you seek it. You seek his structure. You seek the way to live in that kingdom. You seek the king of the kingdom. You seek the way to do certain things. You seek the way uh, you seek how to live in the exchange. You seek him. What happens is we get so distracted and get so busy with everyday life we forget about the kingdom of God we're too busy trying to make it in the kingdom of this world. But an invisible God with an invisible kingdom came down to extend uh, his kingdom on this earth and and now we need to go for it and we need to populate it and do more. Watch this. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm closing this right here. When God made the earth, he was extending his unseen kingdom to a seen kingdom. He was extending his kingdom. He was extending that thing. The devil came and took control of it and Jesus came to reclaim the kingdom. He came to reclaim that thing. And now we're living, we're living as citizens in the kingdom. And as citizens in the kingdom, we have rights. Yes. Right. And as, as citizens in this kingdom, we have rights. Yes. Yes. And we have responsibilities. Uh -huh. But let me tell you about the rights. Let me say something about the rights as we've done. You have a right, let me hang on this one, to everything God promised. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Everything. Yes. Everything. 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 Don't settle for anything less as a citizen of the kingdom. Than what God promises you. Mm -mm. We have to bring. We're responsible for kingdom culture. But let me tell you about your personal life. Because you there's, there's problems going on. We got gas prices skyrocketing. Your rent going up. Aren't your rent? Your, your rent went up. Mine did. Your rent went up. Some of your benefits went down. You got all this stuff going on and the, and the job don't want to pay you enough? You need to know how to live under that open heaven yeah. Yeah. And, 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 be able to be, and be able to be supplied by the kingdom and not just supplied by your job and by what you see around you. So we must prioritize and must begin to seek first the kingdom of God. Listen to what it says, and his righteousness. In other words, your rights as a citizen. Yes. And then all these things will be added. What you've been seeking. What you've been going after. Have you been going, have you been taking time in the words seeking your rights? I, 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 I did, the, I talked about it on, um, on, on the part of the page about it. That, uh, about how many times do you actively file your claim or lay hold of the promises of God a day? Man, I mean, you know, we talked about two times at minimum, but, you know, meditating the word day and night. But, but um, Daniel, Daniel prayed three times. David said, I praise the Lord seven times a day. And my question is to you is this. How often have you been going in this word right here 
and seeking God and seeking his promises, seeking your benefits. Some of you all could have been healed by now if you've been on the word long enough. Some of us could have had some money come in our life if we was on the word long enough. Some of us could have had deliverance from some stuff if we was on the word long enough. We haven't been standing on the Constitution. We get so busy doing everything else, but God says once you begin to stand on this thing and believe on this thing, you will begin to see some things and you got to change the way you think. You got to start changing how you think and start thinking kingdom. Start thinking the way you think kingdom and start thinking this word. Amen. You got to start thinking this word. Amen. You got to start renewing your mind with this word. Amen. Because this word is what, renewing your mind with this word is how you're going to get the change out here. It's how you're going to cause things to change out in your everyday life. But if you're not renewing your mind in the word and standing on the word and, 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 and confessing that word and just daily, daily, daily going in and getting your benefits and saying, God, your word says that I'm healed. Your word says that by your stripes I was healed. And so therefore I am healed. Your word says that you take sickness and disease from the midst of us. Your word says that in Deuteronomy 2861, every sickness under the curse and not under the curse is a curse. And therefore, Galatians 3.13 says, you redeem me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I'm redeemed from all sickness and disease. So in the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm healed. Lord, I thank you that not only I'm healed, but my word, your word says, the Constitution, you are legally bound to this God. God, you are legally bound to this. You are legally, as my king, bound to this Constitution. I'm your citizen here on this colony called Earth. And now I am here and with the promise. I am here with this constitution that says Jesus was poor. Jesus was rich, but then he became poor. That I through his poverty might be rich in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. That's what it says, Lord. The oh, glory to God. Galatians 3 9 says that Abraham, I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. And Genesis 13 and 2 says Abraham was rich. I thank you, Lord, that I'm rich. And also Proverbs 10 22 says the blessing of the Lord maketh me rich. And in Psalm, and in Psalms 3 and 8, the blessing is on thy people. So I'm blessed. So therefore the blessing makes me rich. So I'm rich. Not only that, Lord, John 10, 10 says that you that you give me life and more abundantly. God, I'm coming to you at your word. The Constitution. You're a just king. You're not an unjust king. So my body got to be healed. My body must be healed. So body, listen to that. Listen to me, body. You must obey the word. You must obey the promise. You must obey. Oh, money, you come to me. You must obey because I am rich according to the word. The Constitution says it. And it's mine. It's mine. My question is, how often do you stand on your Constitution like that? How often do you stand on that thing? You say, this is the reality. This is the real. And I, every time I get a chance, I'm going to go and renew my mind on what the Constitution says. And renew my body and renew my situation and tell my situation what the Word says. Because everything has to line up with it. Because I'm in a real, real kingdom with a real king with a real Constitution. And everything, watch this, y'all, everything in this kingdom of this earth, world, was made from the unseen kingdom of God. So everything in the unseen kingdom made everything in this seen kingdom. So therefore, the seen kingdom must obey the unseen kingdom. Heaven, earth, is nothing but an extension of heaven. It's the, it's the, it's the planet birthed by God. So, 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 I, so as a kingdom, we're not, we're not talking about religion no more. We're talking about rights. Yeah, uh -huh. We're not talking about church uh, membership. We're talking about being a saint yeah, yeah. and being a citizen. Yeah. And this right here is my constitution. Thank you, Lord. And I have a right for everything that it says. Yes. And Jesus is my Lord. Yes. Advocating for me while I stand there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That needs to be our reality. I go to work, I do my thing, I do that, yeah, you do all that, but guess what? You got a higher, higher, higher government yes, that you answer to. That's good. And Jesus says the government is on his shoulder, he's yes. burdening it. He's taking care of it. And he's gonna take care of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you.